7.48 a.m. Orlando, Florida, a little bit under 24 hours until race day. Um, back in my childhood home. So, I am going to make some coffee. This thing, I'm guessing my mom bought it in the 1900s. Alright, so in addition to all the other things that I am going to get to do today, I need to go stop and pick up some regular non-decaffeinated coffee. Because I'm going to need that tomorrow morning. Okay. <clears throat> this just continues to be an interesting, uh, interesting weekend. So good news, bad news. Good news is that I get to have some caffeinated coffee. Uh, bad news is that it's instant coffee because my parents' coffee maker from the 1900s uh, is on the fritz and doesn't want to heat up any hot water. So, they get a new coffee maker today. Merry Christmas, parents. Um, yeah, this will do for now and I'll just got to go to the grocery store anyway to get some food um, for tonight, but yep. got some coffee and so let's chat for a sec <clears throat> so tomorrow I am doing challenge Daytona uh, the middle distance it's at the Daytona 500 Speedway International Speedway uh, very excited about it it's going to be just a great day perfect weather just kind of an interesting interesting events that led up to this um, challenge Daytona was not on my schedule it was not a race that I was planning on doing until last week when Florida 70.3 got canceled and I was bummed about that for a few days and then decided, you know what, let's try to make this work um, and do Challenge Daytona. So, sign up for this race. I took my bike into the bike shop to put a new chain on it. Uh, they said that they took a look at it, found two cracks in it. So, it's unrideable. Uh, which, you know, 2020 things, can't ride my own bike in a triathlon. Great. Um, so fortunately, my dad and I are about the same height, same size, and I am going to borrow his bike. So I get to go to the bike shop today in a little bit, grab his bike, hopefully my pedals and seat are on it so that I have some power. Uh, power meter on there and then I am hopefully not too uncomfortable on his bike it's a little bit less of an aggressive um, fit for him I don't have time to tinker with that because I basically have to take it from the bike shop to the race venue to check it in uh, definitely you know one of the things that people say for race day is to never do anything new I don't recommend riding on a bike that you have never ridden on for two and a half hours. But, you know what, I just want to race tomorrow and that's it. So, yeah, kind of a, a weird turn of events where I'm racing a different race on a different bike. And I've swam once in the last five months and I'm not trying to make excuses right now, but it's just going to be... I'm just grateful to be able to be there and to be on the line. I, I don't know, I'm just excited to go explore, see what it's about, and who knows, maybe this will end up on my schedule every year. I'm, I'm pretty excited about running, running and biking on the Daytona 500 racetrack, so yeah. First things first, run this morning, after this, run, a little shake out, and then start the day of oh yeah and we need new coffee maker and new coffee for tomorrow so yeah it's just gonna be a fun day K 
Okay, so we do have some some good news. Uh, bike is done. Pedals and um, seat are are on my dad's bike, uh, which for the next two days will be my bike. And I'm gonna go pick it up at Orange Cycle. Bikes all loaded, let's get to Daytona. so early um it's like four o'clock in the morning and i got two yesterday my coffee pot uh acquisition skills were or coffee pot acquisition was unsuccessful they did not sell it at the grocery store that i went to because it's too small um, so, we have two cups of Starbucks instant coffee instead. It's not perfect, but it'll do in a pinch. And I'm um, going to make the bottles that I have for the race. And then drive to the race. Yeah, this is probably the last, last little bit that I will share. It's getting a little complicated and... Honestly, I just want to focus on focus on the race, but I will say that uh, today's goal is let's see, see if how accurately I can predict how I'm going to do today. Um, I'd say a 35 minute swim would be fair, 35 to 36, considering I've only swam once and my shoulder kind of hurts, so. <laughs> overtraining I guess um, yeah so let's say a 35 minute swim and then a I'm gonna say two and a half hour bike on the nose um, never used this bike before except for the one minute that I rode it yesterday literally like 65 seconds that I rode it yesterday because um, that's all I had time to do and then the run, I'm just going to try to hammer the run. Uh, the run I want to be like definitely under an hour and 20 minutes and as close to an hour and 15 as possible. So let's see. Let's see how accurately I can do that.
So now that the race is over and I have taken some time to have my stomach not be quite as upset um, and my legs don't hurt quite as bad, I'm going to talk about the race and my experience. Uh, first of all, I got this cool visor. So I'm not really a visor guy, but I think you can tell a lot about the quality of a race by uh, the stuff that they give you. And I got this awesome, awesome visor here. Take a, take a peek at it. Look at that. That's great, huh? Yeah. So, so anyways, I got this cool visor. Um, maybe I'm not a visor guy because I don't have any visors. So this could change that. Um, so anyways, <laughs> enough about hat wear, head wear. Um, ooh, not quite. I also got these cool sunglasses, which I have not opened. They are UV protectant, undeniably dairy. They kind of look like a cow or a Dalmatian. Um, Florida milk. I don't exactly think of Florida when I think of milk. I think of orange juice, strawberries. Yeah, that's about it. It just seems like the cows would get hot and they'd have warm milk. I guess warm milk is good before going to bed. This guy decides to mow his lawn five o'clock on a Saturday. <sighs> Teach their own, I guess. Uh, so, anywho, uh, the actual, actual race itself. First of all, it was just super cool to be at the Daytona 500. I remember playing NASCAR Thunder 2002 with one of my good friends in like middle school or maybe even elementary school or something like that where we would ride on the NASCAR track, or on the Daytona 500 track. So uh, it was cool to be there um, in a kind of an iconic venue. <laughs> There's a lake right inside of the venue, so that is a very easy, perfect way to have a triathlon there. Kind of going to, going back to yesterday, where I rode on that bike for like a minute, it was actually really comfortable. A huge shout out to Jerry and Orange Cycle for getting that bike in and adjusting, changing my seat over and trying to make it as close to the position from my bike um, to my dad's bike. Uh, I felt like I was maybe even more comfortable because my dad doesn't have quite as aggressive of a front end position as, as my triathlon bike. Um, so it was maybe even more comfortable if not slightly less aerodynamic, but uh, all in all, that was you know about as good as I could have hoped for riding a bike on the first, pretty much the first time that I rode a bike, uh, having that be in a race, not something I would ever recommend. Uh, but huge shout out again to Jerry and Orange Cycle for, for doing that for us, um, getting that taken care of, and making race day possible. Uh, in 99% of circumstances that would not have been the case. So, actual day itself. Today was a really weird day because there is no one here. Kind of why I had to shut off camera stuff before, before the race because this is not, I don't want to say it's hard, but this is not the most it's just extra extra things to carry, extra things to do, um, and there's already a lot of that with a triathlon. So uh, what made this different than maybe an Ironman, so it was a 70.3, but it was challenge family versus Ironman, um, was that it was basically not entirely self-supported. They still had aid stations, but far less. Um, and I think that's what we'll see at future races, to be honest anyway, just because of uh, the state of the world right now, but um, it was very, very self-supported. The only person that I talked to at the venue itself today was the race director, and the only reason that I did that at the finish line um, with a mask on, they give you a mask right as you finish, um, and obviously he had a mask on, 
but the only reason that I did that was because I went to middle school with his daughter. Um, so I wanted to say hi and relay that information and just thank him for putting on such a great race. Um, so backtracking to the actual day itself, woke up, drove over to Daytona. It's about 45 minutes from where I'm staying. Um, I was really fingers crossed that I didn't forget anything. I got there and thought that I had forgotten something until the actual race had started because it was in my biking shoe. Um, glad that I put it there. It was my bike computer, which just would have been different to bike without having a power meter or heart rate monitor and just go entirely by feel on the bike. I've done it before just from a, a power meter that wasn't working. It's fine, it's doable, but it was helpful to have that data even though I screwed it up. Um, so, the swim was much better than I expected. It might have been a hair short. It's probably short. It's not downstream like Chattanooga, so I'm gonna take it because it's 2020 and we'll take whatever we can get. Uh, so, swim was super, they, they only let a couple people in the water at a time. Everyone was spaced out with different cones. Uh, I felt super safe about it. You kept your mask on until the very, very start. Uh, there was a little trash can that you could put in, your, tra your mask in at the start, um, like right before you were getting in the water. And so that was, I felt pretty good about that. Once I was in the water, I tend to swim way outside of the buoys because I don't like when people bump into me. Not that I know of anyone that does like people bumping into them, but some people like to be as efficient as possible and get in the slipstream and all that jazz. And I just like to chill out way out there because I am not that fast of a swimmer and I don't really want to be bothered by anyone else. So. Swam way outside. I bumped maybe one or two people. Um, it, it went much better than expected and I think that's a huge credit to the Vasa trainer because as I mentioned in the last video, second to last video that I did, I've swam once in the last five months. So a lot of that has come from strength work and really working on my form but on the Vasa of pulling with the correct motion um, and activating the correct muscles. So. Moving on to the bike, I found my power meter in my shoe, which was great. Uh, and then you did two laps around the Daytona Speedway, which was really cool and also challenging. No pun intended. Sometimes I make myself laugh. Probably don't make you laugh though. Uh, so it was very challenging because you were passing people on the right which you're normally supposed to pass on the left, but the left was the inside because you're going counterclockwise. It was a little confusing, uh, and if you weren't keeping tr really good track of your own laps, you probably could have easily gone an extra lap or not, or one less lap. And for the most part, after that, it was smooth sailing. Um, bike course was flat and fast. I rode my dad's bike. It weren't worked super fine, super, yeah, super fine. I wish I had been on my bike because it's a little bit more aggressive of an aero position. Um, would have been nice into the headwind, which was basically the only challenge on the course. Um, ended up biking about as fast as I've biked on most other courses, uh, even on a heavier, less aerodynamic bike. So that was good. Um, the run, running on the speedway was probably cooler than biking on the speedway because you actually had some time to take it in. Um, and I just kind of set out on the run to run basically as fast as I could. And like I said in the video in the morning, try to get as close to 115 as possible, 120 being that like main goal and then 115 being that secondary goal. Anyways, I was happy with the run. Um, just kind of set about running 550 to 545 pace the whole way 
according to their thing, I ran 545 average, so that was 116.20. Kind of omitted the aid stations. I figured I have enough nutrition and fuel to last me another hour once I got off the bike and just decided to not waste any time because once I take in that nutrition, I'm gonna be done anyway. So really it was uh, just kind of a call that I made on the day. I was planning on taking some nutrition in, but sometimes, especially when it's cool outside, you don't feel like you need that extra little bit of water. Ended up with a PR, 2020, somehow bringing in a PR. Uh, 420.04, which is kind of a nice round, it's not really a round number. Anyways, 420.04, so hopefully, hopefully 2021 will bring some more 70.3s and I can work on getting under that 420 barrier and closer to that four hour mark. Um, but all in all, just awesome day and basically as soon as I finished, mask on, to the car, wait until I can get my bike out of transition, go get my bike go home. That was uh, my experience at Challenge Daytona and hopefully in future races I can get there a little bit earlier and don't have to deal with a bike frame that's broken and get more videos and pictures and fun behind the scenes stuff but for this time around the priority is still focused on the actual racing uh, and this stuff is just kind of a bonus. So hopefully you enjoyed that and hopefully I can look to the future with optimism and get excited about potentially racing in 2021. And ultimately today PR is great but it was just nice to be out there. Like It was nice to get in the water and be in a race atmosphere even if it was slightly different than other races just to have that atmosphere and that energy of other people being socially distant around you. Um, yeah, it was great. It was a good way to end 2020, for sure. Anyways, I've had some ice cream, I've had some pizza. I think I might go get more ice cream. See you next time need to think of a cool way to like end these videos so if you have a suggestion let me know don't be if you have a nice suggestion let me rephrase that if you have a nice suggestion let me know thinking like finger guns or or like what do they say in anchor or Bruce Almighty that's the way the cookie crumbles but I can't just steal it